to get in. Major Muhammad Ali Shah who joins me on the broadcast. And uh, you weigh in both the developments coming in from Varanasi and Mathura in Uttar Pradesh. And we take a look at the precedent that has been set in the Ram Janmabhoomi Ayodhya matter, where the places of worship 1991 act had been kept aside. There was an exception that had been placed. Do you think a similar play out happening in the court of law with regards to the Mathura dispute court and now the Gyanwapi case? Okay, Megha, this is a very, very good question and a very pertinent question brought out by you. I would like to answer it in this way. What is the guarantee that here, there is no guarantee, we know it. In fact, I can analyze it right now that such issues will keep cropping. Ram Janam Bhumi, Krishna Janam Bhumi, Gyan Vapi and many others. Thereafter, there is no end. It's going to continue. And what is the solution? Solution is to actually come together, both the communities, and amicably resolve it. Fighting over it and communalizing the issue and doing a, this was a temple or a mosque or invaders, whatever they did earlier, okay, it is wrong. It is really wrong. I mean, but that is what invaders do at the end of the day. It is like digging up the past. It's like if I've got a wound and it's healing up, I will not allow it to heal. I will keep digging it. I'll keep digging it. And then there is no, there's no end to it. And my, my wound will never get healed no matter what antibiotics, what medicine I take. So the best way is it has to be amicably resolved. And we can deploy police over there to, to get uh, peace. Yes. But is that the way? Is that the cure? The way is when you realize it yourself, when you feel from within that, okay, I want peace. I want calm over here. I want brotherhood. I want to live in camaraderie. We are a side bowl nation. You are not a melting pot, unlike the West. Here, you can distinguish very clearly between a carrot, a cucumber. Uh, you know, you can easily tell in a salad bowl what are the different kind of salads. You know, Mega, in, uh, I'll quickly wind up in 30 seconds by saying in Nasik, in Devlai, there's a place called the Artillery Center. In the Artillery Center, there's a square. I'm from that regiment, regiment of artillery. There's a temple, there's a mosque, there's a gurdwara, there's a church on one square, and they coexist beautifully well. Beautifully well. Like there are several such instances can be described. There is the mosque, there is the darga, and I uh, uh, beg your pardon, there is a mosque, there is a temple, there, there, is, there, is a, there is a church, and they all actually harmoniously coexist. Uh, there have been no fights, there have been no communal tensions, but, but uh, the issue that you raise, you know, the fact that where is this going to end, where is the bug going to stop, perhaps after Gyanwapi, perhaps after the Mathura case, would there be another dispute in some other part of the country? But uh, what the Hindus say is that the Mathura area, the Varanasi area and Ayodhya, now they are the key sacred places of worship of Hindus. You pick up any religious textbook of the Hindus and you would be able to gauge that. So, so is there a way to then perhaps for the courts of the law to first of all appoint members from the Hindu community, members from the Muslim community that truly represent these communities. They need to come together, build a consensus, have a dialogue, have discussions and then come to some sort of a concord that what should be the roadmap ahead with regards to the historicity of these places, which are the areas that Hindus find themselves to be in close attachment with in terms of the sacredness of the places versus what is important, what is sacred, what is holy for the Muslims? Well, Megha, God is everywhere. And you have, it's faith. It's there in our heart. It's in our belief, in our mind. I mean, it's, one can be very religious in the mind. One doesn't have to wear religion on his sleeves. One doesn't have to show that he's praying, he's a very godly person by either growing a beard or a cap or wearing a tilak. These are things which are between you and your maker, as simple as that. And there is a wrong misconception often, very often, we find that a person who looks very pious must be a very good person by heart. We tend to, looks are very deceptive. Many times we tend to do that. But we have to judge it by this way. See, I'm a Muslim, Megha. Unless I respect the other community, will the other community respect my faith? Otherwise, it's all going to be ultimately leading to communism and we are going to be divided. 
the birds, the animals, they follow no religion. Have you ever seen a bird or an animal fighting the way human beings are? So human beings... No, but the... let's, okay, fine. Let's say I thank my panelists for joining me on the broadcast.